Gentlelady yields back. The Chair recognizes the gentleman from Nevada, Mr. Hardy, for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I rise today to speak in a bill that I have just introduced, my first as a member of this body. The Land Acquisition to Cut the National Debt, or Land Act, is a common sense piece of legislation that would pro prohibit the Secretary of Interior from using federal dollars to purchase land, resulting in a net increase in acreage under the jurisdiction of the National Park Service, the U.S. Fish and Wildlife, and the Bureau of Land Management unless the federal budget is balanced for the year in which the land was, is, would be purchased. The same would go to the Secretary of Agriculture. Unless the federal budget for the given year is balanced, no net increase in the land acreage may be included in the National Forest System. Now, Mr. Speaker, some of this body may wonder why I've chosen to take up this charge in the 114th Congress. For my friends on both sides of the aisle, many whom may not, may not be too familiar with the life in the out west. Let me give you some background. Just before I arrived to Washington, the national debt was over $18 trillion. As a former small business owner, the federal government's spendthrift habits and utter disregard for the American taxpayer, hard, taxpayers' hard-earned dollars continues to frustrate me today. Like countless Nevadans, it pains me to watch as we saddle our grandchildren with, ut with such an unsustainable debt burden, borrowing against the very future we're, we're responsible for, providing them. Now, Mr. Speaker, my father always said, don't come to me with a problem unless you have a solution for it. I don't pretend to have all the answers on the biggest issues facing this government and this country, but I do bring the private sector Western sensibility to tackling the problem before we get too far out of hand. That's why I'm introducing the Land Act. Simply put, the bill tells the federal government that responsibility and effectively managing 640 million acres of land it already controls must be a higher priority than acquiring even more private, state, and tribal lands. Think about that number for a moment, Mr. Speaker, 640 million acres. That's roughly one-third of the United States. And on those acres, the federal bureaucracy has kept within its iron grip, there is currently an existing an estimated deferred maintenance backlog of $23 billion. That is with a B. So what does that tell the American people, Mr. Speaker? It tells them that the federal government has bitten off more than it can chew. It cannot be trusted to serve the responsible stewardship of even more of our lands and resources. Mr. Speaker, I'm a Nevadan, and the federal government controls more than 81 percent of my state. And I think I speak for most of the, my constituents when I say enough is enough. It boggles the mind to think that each of the 640 million acres the federal government controls is too valuable to be parted with in order to improve the overall management, let alone the fact that the feds want to acquire even more land on top of an already embarrassing maintenance backlog. The Departments of Interior and Agriculture like to tout the important acquisition of it, 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 acquisitions for its conserving species, providing space and recreation and preserving culture and significant sites. My bill would allow them to continue to acquire land as as a tool for these purposes, but it would require them to focus their efforts on the lands that truly need oversight by turning over unnecessary land to those who are best able to manage it, the states. Mr. Speaker, let's be clear, the Department would have the opportunity to net more acreage under the aforementioned agencies, jurisdiction under my bill. That is no longer as a federal budget, uh, that is as long as the federal budget is balanced for the given year. I do not believe this is too much to ask. Where I come from in the private sector, if you don't have a successful business plan, you don't budget well, you go out of business. We all know that the BLM, Fish and Wildlife, and the Park Service aren't going out of business anytime soon. Much to my chagrin, but at least we, but at least we can force them to behave more like one on the land that currently control by ins ensuring that our tax dollars no longer go towards more land for these agencies. 
at the time when our debt continues to soar, we can ill afford irresponsible budgets like the Interior's $13 billion request. We need to get our fiscal house in order, and we can help that process along by passing this my bill. Let's allow the state and local tribal governments to invest in developing the la their lands, creating jobs, and growing the economy instead of letting them fall in disrepair on the federal government's watch. Let's pass the Land, back, la land Act. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. 